of hypomanical mycosis, talk about low level lens of hypomanical mycosis. Kevin, that was a great introduction, and it kind of opens up a, a new world for me to talk about. I'm going to talk about low-level laser therapy, and my uh, disclosures, uh, I'm a, a consultant. I've done research uh, advisory for Aconia. Um, low-level energy. Low-level energy is an anthem to many of us, and you know, I was hearing, listening to Henry, and thinking back with rocks, and, and really the idea of selective photothermolysis has to do with heat. It really has to do with a targeted heat. And we think of low level energy more of voodoo and waving our hands, but it actually has incredible amounts of science. And low level laser energy probably has more scientific studies than anything, many different wavelengths of energy. And the reason is it's photomodulation, it's a trigger, it's a drug. And it mostly works through cytochrome C oxidase in the mitochondria by triggering this. Um, and through this, you can actually show the effects very clearly of. Uh, if you uh, have certain wavelengths, you shine it on cytochrome C oxidase, you can see these effects on cyclic AMP. It also clearly affects gene expression. So the science of here has shown that different wavelengths of light can actually affect different genes and affect proliferation, oxidation, um, DNA synthesis, and others. And the important thing is that in this next study, it's wavelength specific. Different wavelengths have different effects are different targets. This is actually in a, a, a mouse kidney study, um, and it's showing that you can actually affect very specific changes looking at different wavelengths. Now, clinically, if you go through the literature, um, aside from the voodoo, there is incredible science about this, uh, and there's FDA approvals for many, many things uh, using low-level laser energy, especially wound healing, but the pain has been something that has been incredible through double-blind studies, uh, and uh, there's more and more work now on neurological effects as well. But let's talk about the nail. Um, Kiran did a great job on, on talking about the infection, so I'm not gonna talk a lot about this part. Um, uh, onico, uh, dermatophytes are the main cause, but in addition to that, there's vascular abnormalities. This is a paper by Bonnie Aluski, and it's shown that poor blood flow is definitely a factor uh, in onychomycosis. And traditional treatments, as you heard, uh, have issues. You get tremendous complicating factors for many of them. And for most of all, um, the onychomycosis comes back. Uh, this is a guidance paper that essentially uh, looks at it for the FDA trials and said that we really have to standardize how we look at this and use double blind studies. And Akiva did a great job looking at. Uh, many of the different heat spit devices. This is one of the most recent ones, and basically in this it shows that for 1064 it's painful and it doesn't work. Now low level laser that I'll be talking about here today is the lunula laser from Arconia. It's two, dual wavelengths, 405 and 635, and the 405 is antimicrobial, antibacterial, and antifungal, and the 635 increases the immune system and increases blood flow. And there's very, very clear mechanism of action here. A lot of good research on this. The 405 uh, catalyzes through the NOx system to provide um, phagocytes that are activated. Dermatophytes also become more susceptible. Um, the 635 uh, activates uh, P1 kinase and the uh, nitric oxide pathways, increasing the vascular supply, number one, and also upregulating the immune system. And the interesting thing is when you, and, and this is just showing the increased vascular in the nail, when you're uh, looking at this, you can actually look at Dopplers and, and see that. But when you see this combined uh, together, you get uh, the, the increase in uh, peroxynitrate, which is a very unique thing in that it really is very, very toxic to fungus uh, here. The nice thing about the delivery system of low-level laser is it's totally painless and you can treat the entire nail at the same time, which is different than what we see from heat-based uh, uh, devices as well. There is some tremendous clinical data out there. Um, and as, as Kiran talked about, the FDA is, it doesn't want to deal with the issue, uh, and we're trying to change this, of looking at devices like they look at drugs. Uh, they really want to just talk about cosmetic clearance rates, and uh, the argument is on right now, and I'll talk about that in the end to say there's no reason we shouldn't treat these like we treat uh, drugs. Um, but they asked um, uh, the, uh, for the lunula to look at a retrospective study, um, uh, to look at the, uh, clearing nails, and the study essentially dramatically reached its end point because they're able to use 
beautiful blinded trials because it doesn't hurt. So patients don't know if they're getting just a heme beam or they're getting a laser, and you can do this in total blind uh, fashion. Uh, and this just showed that there's uh, a meet their criteria in the six month evaluation. Uh, this is showing the baseline two months and three months of percentage of clear nails, which is again what the FDA wants. This is the millimeters of clear nails throughout this population that you saw. And the contrary here, this is the percentage of onychomycotic disease. And you can see this is very, very dramatic here. Um, and this is just the mean scores and change over time. And here are some examples uh, uh, in this study. You can see these are very, very dramatic uh, changes here. Uh, there was also some great studies done here in Europe. Uh, this is Sullivan's study that was published uh, a couple of years ago. And the interesting thing about the study, it's a very large study, 323 people, over 2,300 nails. They used a lot of different types of patients. They did cultures on every one of these before and cultures on after. And virtually every single one of them was culture negative uh, three months after the study, which is very interesting. They did four treatments, four of these painless treatments. This is the inclusion criteria. They did up to 100% of nails. And you can see the clearance rates here. Uh, obviously, if you have 20%, you can see the clearance rates after 48 weeks. But even after 100%, you have uh, up to 50% uh, clearance um, at 48 weeks. This is another way of looking at that, as is this. This is a very interesting graph because it shows uh, the evaluation points and weeks of clearance here. And as I said, this is not just uh, clear nails. This is also um, uh, uh, onychomycotic uh, uh, culture clearance as well. And this is, again, a, a, an overview uh, showing nails with 90 to 95 percent uh, clearance here uh, at 48 weeks. And you can see in the uh, uh, groups here with very large ends, you have uh, virtually 100% clearance here. And these are some just some examples from the study here uh, throughout the study. The interesting thing is that I've uh, used this now on psoriasis, uh, psoriatic nails with incredible success, as well as nails uh, that had dystrophy uh, from uh, trauma. Um, the interesting about psoriasis is it's actually a covered indication in the United States. So we get reimbursement for the treatment of psoriasis uh, with this. And these are just some examples uh, of treatment. So I, I, I really felt that it, it, it's really nice that I got to go second here because what, what you really laid out was the problem. And uh, I think what you see here is the evolution uh, of uh, use of not heat, but low level laser and more and more data is coming out from this. And what I said was, um, we're actually going to the FDA and say, we want to do the trial exactly uh, like the topicals have done. We want to show it the same way. We want to get the indication uh, for treatment of nail disease. And uh, hopefully uh, this part of the FDA, the, the device part will allow that to happen. But uh, in the meantime, this is uh, EU approved as well as uh, approved in the US. And I think it shows tremendous promise. And, as you said, uh, I invite everyone to uh, visit us at South Beach Symposium uh, next March. Uh, everybody gets discounts uh, if you're a uh, registrant here in the um, 5CC conference. So I thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. That was excellent.